Okie dokie. Let's get into this. All right. So obviously, yeah, like I mentioned, social media is a time sucker. But if you do it properly and if you use it as a DMO, um, obviously you can bring it into your time management and income producing activities, but making sure that you do social media, but also still building in um, meaningful relationships with people is really, really important. So I'm just going to, oh, well, now I have to put this video on. Um, um, he doesn't hear me. Sorry, I want to know if I need more on me. Okay, so this is a very, very incredible video. One thing when you do social media, what I have learned from so many people is you have to find your niche. And as soon as you find your niche, it is so much fun to do social media because you are engaging with people that's like you and people, guys, you have to, I'm starting to engage with a lot of moms, obviously, like moms with toddlers. Our voice notes sound the same. We talk to our child while we're on a voice note. It's hilarious. And there's cows and stuff in the background and you sing songs while you're on it with this next notes. So I'm quickly going to play you this video. It's really, really uh, a good video. It's just five minutes. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to continue with it. One of the most important questions I get asked is, is how to find your niche. Well, I believe it's important because when you're building a business, when you can focus on a very specific group of people, you'll have an easier time becoming an industry leader and an authority in your field. Do you need to have a niche? No. But will a niche help you quicker because you'll be able to build a specific business for specific needs? Yes. When I was a photographer, my first niche was brides. Instead of saying I was a photographer who shot everything, I focused only on brides. And then I quickly became one of the leading photographers in the world. Because of this, I was able to focus on a different niche, which was photographers. I went from shooting to teaching photographers how to run a better business. This then led me to another larger niche, which is teaching small business owners how to run a better business. What I discovered was that when I mastered one small niche, it empowered me to step into larger niches and expand my brand. If you are looking to define your niche, we could spend an hour together talking about the specifics, but since we don't have that time, I wanna share with you three powerful tips to help define your niche. Number one, who do you specifically serve? It's not enough to say you serve men. That's half of the human population. You need to clearly identify what type of men, athletes, entrepreneurs, stay-at-home dads. The more specific you get, the better off you'll be when you first start. And this leads us into tip number two. What problem do you solve? The best businesses take time to understand what problem they are solving, and then they offer the easiest and most effective solutions. If I serve male athletes, I could solve their muscular impediments with my physical therapy advice. If I serve male entrepreneurs, I could solve some of their time and management difficulties with my time-saving productivity tips. If I serve stay-at-home dads, I could solve their cooking difficulties with my recipes and meal planning tips. Okay, so do you see the patterns here? I get a niche and I build in content that speaks specifically to them. So do you see how we're honing in our marketing and our messaging by simply answering those two questions, which leads us to the last and final tip. That's tip number three. What makes you different? Like why specifically you? This is your chance to stick out from the competition. Now we all have unique insights and experiences that we can use to differentiate our businesses. And they could be big things like degrees and diplomas and certifications and awards. And this could be unconventional big things like life experiences, being self-taught, having a great personality, or making things easy to understand. I want you to make a list of what makes you specifically qualified to serve a niche. Now, before you freak out, when I first started my business, my unique assets were just three things. I liked to write, my name, Jasmine Starr, stuck out on the page, 
and I profoundly understood my dream customer. Now, remember, I said I wanted to start off as a photographer, and my biggest asset, what made me different as a photographer, was that I like to write and my name, and I understood my customer. Like, this is not what you would expect, but I found a way to make it work. Why? I knew how to write blog posts and social media posts that connected with my dream customer. How did I know my dream customer? Well, I was a wedding photographer who just got married. I understood my customer so well. And my name, Jasmine Starr, is the my birth name that my mama gave me, and it just happened to stick out. So every time I introduced myself, I didn't introduce myself just as Jasmine. I introduced myself as Jasmine Starr, a photographer from Orange County, California. Now let's close this with a very simple exercise that is very helpful. My friend, Mel Abraham, developed the value articulation statement, and it looks like this. I want you to fill in the blanks, but I'll use my business, Social Curator, as an example to get your wheels turning. I help business owners build a brand and market it on social media so they can create a life they love. Instead of feeling lost and overwhelmed because my purpose is to empower people to believe that impossibilities are just possibilities in disguise. Now it's your turn. Complete the value articulator statement to define your niche. If you'd like to dive deeper into understanding how to define your niche and how to build yourself as an industry authority, I. Okay, so I thought that video is an incredible video just to start off um, your social media. So guys, the one thing I just want to start off with before going on with this social media um, training is remember social media is a DMO. You don't have to do it, but it's nice to know these things if there's someone you sign up eventually that has social media as one of their strengths. Um, so this, you don't have to go tomorrow and feel overwhelmed and say, oh, no, I have to do her social media. These are just a few tips, but it's always nice to know and um, grow your, 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 um, yourself personally. So to go on now, social media and finding your niche um, is one thing that we, um, when we did our personal branding course, really took time to define, like, to zone in. And all the social media curators I'm following at the moment on Instagram focuses on finding that niche, finding that person you want to serve. And when you're on your social media, you talk to that one person. That one person, you started writing down their qualities, who they are, what their um, daily activities are all about, um, what they struggle with, what their pain points are, stuff like that, so that you talk directly to them. So they connect with you much faster, they trust you much faster, and that helps you to bring in your herbal life because you are solving their problem. So... <clears throat> the people you want to work with. And the one thing is your niche is usually you. You're, it's usually you. So you are actually just talking to yourself on social media. But obviously it doesn't have to. So she obviously talked to herself. But I know a lot of women focusing on helping men with their problems or pain points or whatever. So one first thing. So now... You have your niche, you've got your dream custom in your mind. Um, now you need to start off with the look and the feel of your profile. Who are you? What these people you have to start attracting now with your profile. So like she also mentioned, and like quite a few other people mentioned, is the I help statement. Who do you help? Why do you want to help them? How do you want to help them? And in your bio... Um, this is now on, on Facebook or Instagram. You choose your platform. It doesn't have to be Instagram. This can also be Facebook if you're a Facebook lover. Um, I'm busy building my brand on Instagram, but I'm sharing 90% of the stuff to, so, to Facebook as well. So it's a double whammy for me. So sit down and think about your I help statement. And in those few characters that you have is when someone land onto your profile and they see this, would they follow you? And why would they follow you? And what are they going to get from following you? That it, I'm all, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's just like that. When I go onto 
a social media platform and I start following someone, it's because I like their content and it's stuff that resonates with me. And yeah, that's how I start following people. Um, so think about, would you follow yourself if you saw the stuff there and if you saw your bio saying what your bio is saying? Okay, now your profile picture. Your profile picture is your brand logo. This is who you are. Like Sunlam has their little hands, like Pick and Pay has their PNP, like Debonairs, like all those places. If you see their logo, you know exactly who they are, what they are, what they do immediately. So your profile picture is your logo. You'll see all these big brands um, in like following vibes um, on social media have one profile picture and that picture sticks. And usually those pictures really stand out and usually those pictures are face shots or shoulder and up shots because you have to think about the small thumbnail. That small thumbnail that's next to comments, that's next to um, stuff, that, yeah, the stuff you comment on. If you have a picture where you are standing in your whole picture, that thumbnail is literally just a little line, almost. But if it's like, this was literally a photo that I played with while we were doing the Marina Simone course. I didn't think that it's gonna be the, my profile pic. I literally just played around with it, but it stuck and it stood out when I posted stuff and commented on stuff. So I kept it like that. Now, you don't have to put a clear background at the back, but if you have a beautiful picture that really talks to who you are, use that picture and stay with that picture. Okay. Um, and they suggest you keep your profile picture the same on all your platforms, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. And they suggest that you don't put your company, your network marketing company on your profile picture. Because let's say your ideal customer, your niche person, have already tried Herbalife, but they had a terrible coach, a very bad reaction to the products because they used a lot of milk. As soon as they see your profile picture, they won't follow you because you're that Herbalife person. But now, if you didn't have that on your profile and they start building a relationship and you start talking to them and you, and then you start engaging and asking them, have you ever tried supplement? They, yeah, they would say yes, Herbalife, and you would talk about your Herbalife journey. And maybe you can help them with PDM. They get great results. They trust you as a coach. You do much better follow up. See where I'm getting at? So, not, yeah, we're going to make it from the beginning of the camp. Okay. So, now you have your face of your platform perfect. Now you have to start thinking about what you want to start posting. What would your niche, your dream customer want to see? What value do you have to add? And this is now my content pillars. They call it content pillars. Um, you'll hear Jasmine Star also spoke about the content pillars and stuff like that. But this is what resonates with me. This is where I feel I have information that I can give where I can add value to my niche, my dream customer. So I'll post fast and easy meals and snacks. I'll post stuff about Zora, what I'm doing, DIY tick tricks, um, mom life. I would post relatable posts like, seriously, guys, my house is never clean. Just got a hand of paint on my wall. How do I get it off? Sick of stuff. So stuff where I'm at cur currently in my life. Um, fitness stuff, I would, if I found a cool workout, I would post it whatever so and then my personal development and my bible time people resonate with that as well um i actually did a few surveys with my followers to ask them what they wanted to see and most of them said personal development weird i would have never guessed that so that's where surveys with your your ideal customer is really good idea um, I literally asked a few of my people that I haven't signed up yet that I really want in my team if I could do like a, a questionnaire with them um, just to find out what 
they would like to see and stuff like that. And that's where it came out. So that's also a very nice thing to interview like your dream customer that's not a dream customer yet. Tip. So content pillars, one thing about content pillars is you don't have to go post from your content pillars every single day on everything, every single pillar. Like um, this morning, um, you guys saw my post on Go Get Group. Um, I made Zara a yummy lunchbox. I saw, oh, this is a cool post. I'm going to post this today. I took a photo and I built my post around that. Um, freaking, I went on a date night. I got a cool photo. So I built a post around that. Um, stuff like that. So you don't have to, you can plan your post ahead, obviously, but um, it's all also stuff that you're busy with. So it doesn't have to be like so time consuming. Um, it's literally what's what's currently happening. So um, this is just a few ideas with what to post. And this I also bring into my Facebook group that I'm busy running at the moment as well, um, where I'm also creating like a mom community, not a lot of her life, but I'm building relationships at the moment. So yeah. Then um, the people also says, guys, this is not my own thing here. I'm literally following so many social media people um, and I'm just getting a lot of information from them is they say, find one platform, master one platform at a time and find people you enjoy watching or find people you enjoy their content, follow them, learn from them, save their posts. Um, so this is what makes this nice is it's you. You find something you enjoy. So I'm enjoying Instagram a lot. I'm enjoying the reels. I'm enjoying how I can grow my following much faster, but I'm also enjoying the more engagement I'm getting on Facebook, but on the same post. So, um, yeah, you, you find your platform and then you, you dabble in that. Um, while I'm on Facebook and Instagram, I don't scroll for the fun of it. I scroll to find content I enjoy, especially on Instagram. I scroll and I find stuff that, people say in a way and I really enjoy the way they're saying it and I think it's quite unique and then I'll save it and make it my own. I don't like copy and pasting, but I like getting inspired and using that and making it my own and making sure I'm authentic and myself and my wording is in it. Um, and the question again, would you follow yourself is one of the big things. So, People skips people skip advertisements. They don't like posts with a Herbalife shake on a kitchen counter that they found off of a website. People skip that. I skip that. When I see new skin post, when I see Avon post, when I see whatever, I skip it. So I won't post stuff like that, but I will post like this post of mine. I made this on a mommy group. Guys, I had like probably 200 comments that I could build a relationship. I can't remember how many comments I got, but it was a lot. But my post wasn't a post where I was explaining all the benefits of collagen. It was just, oh my sack, this is so good because our collagen is so good. And yeah, so this really, this is just a different spin on it. But when you post something on your status, on your story or wherever, be mindful and think about what do I want to get out of this post? Why am I posting this? What do I want to tell my customer or my ideal client? What will they see? Um, post about our new products, but be clever about it. Post where you're drinking your pink drink and say, oh my goodness, this is delicious. Just that. Don't go and say, oh, my word, this is my Herbalife collagen drink. This is the most amazing drink. This is Verisol P and type two in one. And this, people don't want to read that. They want to say, oh, my sack, what's that pink drink? Yo, the girl like good. I want to message her. So you want to, yeah, well, I, you want to look at that conversation. Um, on your status, oh, your, your, your status and your story, you can go crazy with your Herbalife stuff, where you are constantly making your products, where you're enjoying your shakes, where you're enjoying your foods, um, stuff like that. Show people your consistency 
of what you are. Like Cynthia said, she doesn't go a day without posting her, her meals or her shake. Um, because a new follower like me can go onto her profile and see and not see her shake or not see her meals. And I will be there just for one day. So consistently sharing on your status, your story, your products and, and stuff like that. But on your wall, make sure that you add value. Your posts must make, must add value. Okay. Um, take it slow. When um, I did the social media course with um, Andre, I felt paralyzed. Guys, it was information overload. I didn't know what to start with, what to do, what, what I didn't know. And social media usually has that effect on a person especially if it's something new you are thinking about doing or implementing it. So everything happens so fast and changes so fast on social media. One big tip I can give you is take it slow. Take a platform, start with your profile picture. Done that, tick that. Start with your bio. Done that, tick that. Next thing, what type of things do I want to post? Write down two or three things and start getting a few contents on there that and decide, okay, I want to post twice a week. That's going to be my consistency, twice a week. Later on, three times a week. And as soon as you start getting better, you can do once a day. And as soon as you get better, twice a day. So see, you'll build yourself up to that. I'm on that place where I can do like five times a week. And that's okay for me now. And I'm planning my post ahead and I'm not feeling overwhelmed and I'm okay but in the beginning I said to myself once a week a value adding post once a week okay got that so one big tip I can give you this is one of the biggest things that is really hard for me <laughs> not to be perfect on social media because you think you have to be because that's usually what social media was all about, showing your perfect life and your perfect body and your perfect face and your perfect everyone, everything. Um, no one is perfect. And that's one of the big things I enjoy from Marina. Um, I know Laverne did a course of with her. I know, I think Tasha also did. Um, she did a training once with us with like 10, 20,000 people on, on Facebook. The back of her room was so demacor of toys. I was like, I feel so at home. I feel so at home with this woman because there's stuff scratched on the walls. There's toys li lying around. She's also a person. And she said one thing. If you're going to post only when your house is clean, you'll never post. And that's so true. If I'm going to go live every time I have no dishes, I'll never go live because I always have dishes. I don't know why, but when I finish my dishes, it's there again. So I also started posting where, where I don't have makeup on and my hair looking like this. This is my constant hair at the moment. I don't know why, but it looks like that. But people laugh and they're getting to know me and this is what I look like. So Obviously, I'll make myself pretty once in a while and, and go live like that as well. But this is me. And this is what your social media wants. They don't want this done up poppy every single... If you're done up poppy, then that's, your, that's you. But that's not me. So being authentic on your social media is a very, very, very important thing. And daar so say, dit is wat ek vir ons voorbereid. Um, I don't know what the time is, my friend, inside. I'm quickly going to stop our share and stop our recording. If you guys got any... Ooh, one thing. I know I posted it on the group today, but Planoly has literally saved my life. I hope you guys saw that part of the video. Planoly, let me quickly stop my share. I'm going to stop the recording as well. Um...